Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Naz and today I'll be discussing about pleural effusion. It refers to the accumulation of fluid in the pleural cavity and it's broadly classified as either transudative or exudative. As transudative effusion is caused by systemic factors, therefore both lungs are equally involved. And if you check the pleural fluid pH, it will be more than 7.4. However, in exudative effusion, as it is caused by local factor which alter pleural surface permeability therefore it affects unilateral lung or the pleural fluid pH will be less than 7.4 so these are different causes of effusions and as I have told you that transudative effusion is due to systemic factor that it involves lungs bilaterally so the systemic factors that may cause transudative effusion are congestive heart failure nephrotic syndrome cirrhosis pulmonary embolism atelectasis malabsorption hypothyroidism meek syndrome meek syndrome is right ovarian fibroma which is associated with right pleural effusion constrictive pericarditis etc however exudative effusion is caused by paranemonic effusion in pneumonia malignancy tuberculosis pulmonary embolism in two-third of cases collagen vascular diseases pancreatitis esophageal rupture mesothelioma and lymphangitis carcinomatosa the patients are often asymptomatic but some may present with dyspnea pleuritic chest pain on examination there will be decreased chest expansion and a stony dull percussion note breath sounds will be diminished on the affected side and tactile vocal phrematis and vocal resonance are also decreased on the affected side for the diagnosis we can perform chest x-ray posterior anterior view erect curved shadow at the lung base which will blunt the costophrenic angles so this curved shadow may form a meniscus sign fluid appears to track up the lateral chest wall around 200 ml of fluid is required to be detectable on chest x-ray this is the chest x-ray which is showing left-sided pleural effusion as you can see clearly that it has diminished costophrenic angle and it is forming a meniscus sign so for diagnostic studies we can perform thoracosynthesis in which we will aspirate pleural fluid and all the effusions of more than one centimeter in decupitous view of chest x-ray can be obtained or can be aspirated from thoracosynthesis. So this is the light criteria to differentiate between exudative and transudative effusion. So on after obtaining as aspirated fluid, we will check the following parameters like LDH in the effusion. If it's less than 200 unit per liter, then it's transudated, and if it's more than 200, then exudated. LDH effusion to serum ratio if it's less than 0.6 then it's transudate and more than 0.6 is exudate and protein effusion to serum ratio if less than 0.5 then it's a transudative effusion so in transudate there will be less serum protein and less LDH as compared to serum levels so you have to treat the underlying cause example paranemonic effusion in uncomplicated patients and when there when the effusion is not symptomatic so you will simply give antibiotic for the treatment of pneumonia or the cause whatever the causes you have to treat it and uh, in complicated example if there is positive gram stain or culture or ph is less less than 7.2 glucose is less than 60 then you will perform tube thoracostomy and drainage is done if the effusion is symptomatic and it should be done slowly less than 2 liter per day because you cannot directly make the patient hypovolemic or suddenly hypovolemic other measures include pleurodesis with tetracycline and bleomycin for recurrent effusions and surgery so this is the end of the lecture i hope you learned something from it if you do please like my video and share it with your friends and subscribe to my youtube channel thank you so much for watching